What's going on guys? It's Tony from Lomo Paintball. Today I'm bringing you a quick overview of the Die Dam. Son, yes, we know, we know this gun is not new by any means, but a lot of people have interest in them. So we're gonna give you a quick overview, a couple of key features that uh, you guys might be interested in. First off, let's set this bad boy down. It does come with a very, very nice hardcore case. Mark, like this is literally like a case that a real firearm would come in. I mean, this thing's pretty, pretty heavy duty, pretty big and solid. So we'll just flip that boy on over. You're gonna notice first off, it comes with uh, two different magazines. So one, in the gun, one here, and then just this one actually is a parts kit. So you wanna be very careful in opening this because it's got, I believe, a ton of O-rings. Let me just press this and see. Hold on, very carefully. So yes, so right there, and you're gonna open up this smaller kit. It has nothing to do with the actual feeding of the marker. You've got all your rebuildable O-rings, extra screws, ID tents, and um, a battery, obviously. And then on this other side, you're gonna have Allen wrenches. But once again, be very careful, guys, when you open this smaller magazine that uh, you don't rip it because all this stuff is gonna come flying on out. Uh, got your barrel cover here. I don't know how well you can see that, Mark. Yeah. Barrel cover and then warranty cards. Comes with uh, lube, more Allen wrenches, a color-coded guide to the size of your O-rings and you know how to where to put them, install them, etc. So flip it open like this centerpiece is very nice and hard. And then in here, you've got a couple extra components. So let me just, let me reach in here. It's kind of kind of tight. Let me pull this out and pull that out. So Mark, hit me with a question. Ask uh, me. Well, how much is a die dam? What's it go for? I think these, these guns retail 1550, I believe. Yep. Right. 15. And the solid colors are, I think are an even 15, but this okay. is a fade. It's a fancy. Color. Yeah. This is a fancy fade one. So these things are minimum. You're going to be spending about 1500 bucks on something that can do hopper fed and mag fed within the flick of a switch. And we'll get to that. So, so is this a mechanical gun or electronic gun? This is a fully electronic gun. You have your components, your power button here, you've got your mode selector. And then also if you want to turn your eyes on or eyes off, or let you know if there was an eye fault. So it is fully electronic too. And you've got three different buttons, you know, power, modes, eyes right there on the side. All right, let's start from the back. Tell okay. me about the oh, stock. Sorry. Okay, so this is gonna be the ultralight stock. It's got uh, multiple positions and the way the curvature is on here, you could actually fit a 68 4500 air tank in the airport on off ASA, which is, you know, a nice quick feature. It's got your airport on off ASA turning air on and off, obviously, but some guns out there, they won't fit a bigger tank in the back. So this has plenty enough room with the stock on there to get a 68 4500 air tank. Nice, I wish I would have brought one out to show it. Correct, well, next just, time. Just, just believe us. Next just time we do an us. overview of this. Uh, so we started from the back. Um, so this piece here, Mark, this one right here with the set screw already in there, this will allow you to cap this off if you don't wanna run a stock. A lot of guys like to run their stock, but if you wanna take the stock off, it's simply one set screw right in this region. And then you can take the stock off and you can throw this cap on there. That is what that piece is used for. Nice. Uh, um, like I'd mentioned previously, it does have that airport on off ASA, which is a lot of die guns do. Go okay. ahead. Uh, and then do you adjust your regular, your- uh, Velocity. Velocity in the ASA there? No, you don't. No? No. Where do you do that? So technically there's three screws here if you wanted to do some work or maintenance. Um, actually, I'm almost certain you're adjusting your velocity through this actual, there's a small Allen key through there. So the regulator is built into the bolt system itself. So that's a, a very unique way to adjust the velocity on the gun. Nice. Speaking of that, can you, can you see that? I do. This is your quick access bolt system. So if you wanted to unscrew this bad boy and actually access your bolt, you can do so. So this back portion technically is the regulator. Once again, we just talk about the velocity and then the front portion, I believe these uh, are the fuse bolt. So regulator is in here. You actually have your bolt up top. Like I said, this is a very, very unique design. So while you have that out before you put it back in, can you grab the bolt out of either the M3 or the DSR just for comparison? Cause sure. this is an impressive bolt in the die dam. Okay. So, sorry. I know it's a little throwing you off. It's okay, Mike. Kilter. We'll but so, so there's a, Normal speedball gun. So bolt this is the die dam bolt, and then this is the normal, um, like a yeah, an M3 plus speedball 
bolt per se. Yeah, look so, how much bigger that die yeah, dam bolt is. That's, yeah, that's some, what I'm saying. This, the die dam, yeah. that's why we're doing this video. Obviously these guns aren't new by any means, but there's a lot of unique features that people don't know about the gun, so. And we sell a lot of the mechanical mag-fed guns. We do, we And do. I think people started to think like, you know, the starter guys anyway, like do they even have electronical mag-fed? So the best part about this in my opinion is I think it's the only one on the market able to do this. I don't know, there's so many good features. I wanna talk about this, the flip switch, but then, okay, I'll talk about this first, Mark. Okay. So first off, obviously you can run, this is a mag-fed gun or a hopper-fed gun or both if you'd like. So this magazine here, it's actually got what I refer to as like dust covers. So if you're carrying these in your tactical vest or something, they have covers over the top so there's no dirt, debris, or paint getting in there. Once you, you can load these up with first strike rounds or 68 caliber, I wouldn't suggest switching like in the same chamber, first strike 68, first strike 68. If you're gonna do one or the other, stick them in the same chamber because this magazine, you can shoot them out of this side first you can flip it over, put it back in, and then shoot them out of that side too. So you could technically be running 68 caliber and also first strike in the same mag, but different chambers. That would be my suggestion. Back to the hopper piece. So Mark, this is, like I said, coolest part of my opinion. So this is the hopper attachment. That'll go right here. So you can run your hopper attachment. So you can actually have your hopper on. You can have a magazine full of first strike rounds in here. You can be ripping your hopper. You can shoot it fully auto however you'd like. All of a sudden, if you see a guy that's further out, you know, way out there in the woods or whatever you guys are playing, scenario game, you can actually flick the switch and, well, technically, it's this would be hopper in the back. And if you want it to go first strike all of a sudden, push the switch forward. Now you're shooting out of your magazine instead of the hopper. So I think, put in the comments below if I'm wrong, this is the only gun on the market that can do that right on the fly. So it's really, really cool. Back position, you're shooting out of your hopper. You see a guy further away downfield, you can flick the switch forward and now you're shooting first strike or whatever out of your magazine now. So that's a really cool feature. That is cool. Um, any other questions about this section of the gun, Mark? We kind of covered, you know, the bolt and how we can go from hopper to mag fed real quick. Does it use other magazines like I know, doesn't I make a bigger magazine? And They then, have you know, that, and they can also use a big box magazine as well. I know they're expensive, but they hold a ton of paint. It's been a while, but I know there's a box magazine that can go on this thing, and you'll have a lot of shots in there, there's no doubt. Uh, speaking of that, you've got the new, these ones are the continuous feed magazines, just throwing that. These are also an option, so if you want to check those out on the website, lomopaintball.com, continuous feed magazines as well. And we did a full video on those Planet Eclipse continuous feed uh, We mags. did, we did, so those definitely work with this. Um, like I said, I think my biggest feature of this gun is being able to go from hopper to mag with a flick of a switch, literally. Um, ooh, ooh. Up yeah, Go I'm ahead. excited. I'm excited because I maybe not so much for the shroud. I'm, I'm I'm interested, but every die gun that I've ever seen usually comes with a die UL barrel. Yeah. Oh yeah. I was going to talk about that. This is like they're called, I believe, called their modular shroud. So right here, Mark, this breaking point right here. If you don't want to have this little excess of you know more Picatinny rail, um, it's up to you. You can take that portion off, and then you can just rock it simply. Uh, with just a half, you know, you've got your nice, your holding position up here. Um, one thing I would like to say though, is as I'm unscrewing this barrel, make sure since this is a two piece, 14 inch die UL barrel, do not screw this into the gun extra, extra tight. Because if you do, and you go to unscrew it, if the barrel breaks apart here in the middle section, like so, then you're gonna be taking your shroud completely apart to get the barrel off the gun. So screw your barrel on, little snug, don't be cranking it on there because your barrel could unscrew and then you'll be stuck with taking the gun or the front portion of the gun apart to get the barrel off. Um, other than that, yeah, like I said, I just wanted to bring you a quick uh, overview if you've never heard of the die dam or didn't know what it was. This is it, these things are about 1,550 bucks. It's definitely worth it if you are an avid woods ball or scenario guy, mag fed player, something like that. Does it have eyes since it's electric? It does, oh yeah, it does, yep. Okay. Yeah. It's and got then... eyes, it's got the uh, detents that I showed you in the kit earlier. Um, it's pretty much, damn, uh, die assault matrix. This is a matrix, but in a tactical version. So yeah, this is it. These guns are awesome. They can do a lot of things. So check them out on the website at lomopaintball.com. 
And Mark, do you have any other questions for me? Uh, just one that's not related to this specific gun, okay. uh, but from the YouTubes. Go ahead. A Y Y it's C B. A it's C B. I guess. Okay. Uh, says, can I fit my die rotor underneath the two? Yeah, I don't see why not. Hmm? I mean, your die rotor can definitely go underneath the two. It's not the uh, obviously the rotor doesn't have the PAL capabilities, but yeah, a rotor will go underneath the two, no problem at all. There you go. If you've got a question, leave it in the comments below. Otherwise, take your butt over to LoneWolfPaintball.com and take a look at all the good stuff we have, including this die dam. And we'll see you next time. I like that, Mark. You were like a guy on TV or something. I like it. Hey.